Well, now it's time to see what has been clicking in Cleveland with our digital anchor, Stephanie Haney. And Stephanie, people are reacting to Governor DeWine's decision not to make wearing a face mask mandatory. They are, Betsy, and Governor DeWine said he did it because some of, some Ohioans found it offensive, but there are definitely some people who find this change in course offensive, like this person who says that they just don't understand how we can all accept that we have to wear pants in public, but covering your, quote, germ-spewing mouth that might carry a virus that could kill is offensive. And then there's this person who says, shame on you to DeWine for not backing up the people on the front lines, referring, of course, to people working in the public. Now, remember, though, just because the state is not requiring it doesn't mean a store won't require you to have a face mask to come inside. This person points out that we can all choose to go to stores that support our values and standards, saying she'll keep wearing her mask, but she's not going to police others who don't. Now, despite this latest controversy, DeWine is getting a lot of attention on the national stage for his leadership here in Ohio. This morning, in a New York Times article, New York Times writer Trip Gabriel called DeWine proactive, bold, and said he's become a household name. And a new poll from Baldwin Wallace College shows that 85% of Ohioans approve of what DeWine is doing overall, and 90% of people trust him to give that accurate information. And the trust is really where it's at, and that is hard to come by. Okay, now let's talk football. In the last round of the draft, the Cleveland Browns did grab themselves a wide receiver. So our three new sports analyst, Ben Axelrod, took a look at how he stacks up with the rest of our offense. And we've got that for you right now. We're first going to start with the running backs. You know, our number one running back, of course, Nick Chubb, who was just incredible last year, our offensive MVP for the Browns. In the number two spot there, we've got Kareem Hunt. He's re-signed, so he's coming back. And then number three, we've got Dontrell Hilliard, who is coming up on year three in the NFL. Now, if we take a look at the wide receivers, we've broken these down into two groups. First up, we've got Odell Beckham Jr. He's hoping to have a more powerful season this year. In the number two spot in this group, we've got the new Donovan Peoples-Jones, our last pick in round three on Saturday. And then Kaderil Hodge in that group. Now, if we take a look at the next group of wide receivers, We've got Jarvis Landry coming back again, Damian Ratley, and then Taewon Taylor, and this will be his second season with the Browns. Now, if we take a look at our new coach, Kevin Stefanski, he's a fan of having two wide receivers in the setup on the field. So we could see some OBJ and Landry teaming up there, but we do have to remember, Betsy, that they are coming back on surgeries in this offseason. So could be a good chance for those number two guys like uh, Peoples-Jones to step up, and we'll be very interested to see what happens there. Awesome. Good stuff. Well, Clevelanders love to, you know, see those guys come up from behind. So we do appreciate, uh, you know, the team coming together. That's what we need more than all. Just get a win. I don't care who does the thing. Just get a win. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Stephanie. That's